Coach, a, a nice win over Furman to move to the round of eight in the playoffs. You go back to that game. Uh, you passed it effectively. You ran it effectively. When you went back and looked at the film, what really stood out to you? High level of intensity uh, in all three phases. Some really good execution. Uh, there were some guys, quite frankly, that had uh, big days, uh, really big days for uh, their performance, uh, making plays all over. Uh, Dominique uh, was, gosh, it seemed like every time that uh, the announcer said something, uh, they mentioned his name. Uh, had a great game, made big plays. Uh, definitely some of the hits that he passed out uh, were highly motivated. Um, you look at uh, Dottavius coming back, uh, making plays, uh, big stops. Um, you, you see the offensive line, uh, second half, first half, uh, Furman hung in there, but the second half, I, I think both l sides of the ball, uh, offensive line, defensive line, took over. Uh, our running backs ran hard, blocked tough, uh, made big plays. Uh, we, we've got some outstanding guys who have uh, tremendous skill. Uh, you look at Blake, uh, you, you have uh, a guy that – uh, tremendous balance, quickness, uh, can give you that limp leg and, and keep on going. Uh, Lennox, uh, same way. Toughness, uh, all those guys doing their job, whether it's carrying the ball, whether they have to block, going out and catching passes. Uh, Brandon had a great day at the quarterback position. Uh, it was one of those games where everybody – uh, had a piece in it, uh, special teams wise. Uh, Luke, I thought he had another great day. Uh, he had one miscue, but uh, on one kickoff. But other than that, uh, all the PATs, field goal, and then uh, the uh, field goal fake was um, was in that as well. So, coaches prepared uh, our kids well. Uh, our guys were ready to play mentally and. Uh, it was a great atmosphere. Uh, Furman brought a lot of people. There was a bunch of people in the stands and on the banks and on the hills and in the parking lots, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a great day. First half, a number of penalties that kind of short-circuited things. Yeah. Things seemed to settle down in the second half. What was your message at halftime? Uh, message at halftime was uh, just do your job. Uh, we're in this game. Uh, we've got an opportunity to win it. Just take care of the ball, uh, do what you're supposed to do, and uh, everything's going to be all right. I think uh, in starting out the game, uh, there was a bunch of energy on the field on both sides. And, uh, you know, the, the penalties and things like that, if it's a penalty where you're uh, trying to, uh, you know, make a block or you're, or you're too – aggressive all right uh, if it's one of them bonehead penalties where uh, you're being selfish and uh, you know making some uh, bonehead decision on your own then that's not all right but uh, we got things uh, squared away dialed in uh, second half was wow you, you looked at us defensively and uh, our defensive front our front seven uh, just got after it um, and on you, you, the offense and the defensive side, it, it, it was big for us. As well as Billy Hinton and Weston Roundtree have played, yeah. what was the difference having Dottavius and Colton back inside at linebacker? Uh, about two years of experience. Uh, you know, you, you have guys that, that have played for a couple years, and then you have guys that, that are on their fourth year, uh, fifth year, uh, you you just you know you've seen it more you 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 play faster uh, you anticipate better and uh, it it was uh, it was great to have those guys in there. 
Okay, North Dakota State this week. Yes. Quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. You saw them in 2012. You tell me schematically they're they're basically the same. Yeah. Let's start with their quarterback, Easton Stick. What does he look like on film? What do you have to do? Uh, good player. Uh, you know, it, when you just just go down the roster, you know, start at the wide receivers and move left to right. Uh, uh, offensive line, huge. Uh, athletic kids. Um uh, Wide receivers, quality, uh, quarterback, you know, play anywhere. Uh, and if, if you look at their whole team, uh, they've got kids, quite frankly, that, that could be at the FBS level. Uh, I'll, they've had uh, outstanding recruiting. Uh, you can tell that the uh, tradition and the culture of Bison football is uh, – uh, one of those things that, that helps them in the recruiting aspect. Uh, tremendous athleticism all across the board. Uh, they, uh, they're just tough. They, they play hard. Uh, they're not going to give you anything easy. And uh, if you're going to earn a first down, you, you're going to have to earn it. Uh, Matchups. Our defense versus their offense, uh, I, I think we, we've got a good matchup. Um, offensive line on our side, uh, it, it's going to be a, be a big challenge. But we've kind of had a, a situation the past two weeks uh, looking at playing – Carolina and then looking at playing Furman. Uh, there's some similarities in physical size uh, and athleticism of their defense versus our offense. And uh, I, I think we, we can match up with them all across the board. Uh, the game will be decided by who executes the best. And uh, the advantage they have is when they're trying to call plays uh, it's dead silent. When we try to call plays, there's 18,891 people <laughs> screaming, and uh, it, it makes it difficult. But all that being said, uh, we had a taste of that when we went down to Carolina and, uh, and did a good job. So we're, we're going to have to uh, be – dialed in as far as communication and then after that once a ball snapped let's go play ball what about the Furman game was so good for the defense you held them to 52 yards rushing they came in averaging about 240 what did you guys do so effectively against the run oh well we all just played our assignments and just play hard we knew if we played hard and just played our assignments and then give up no big plays we would we would hold them to under 100 yards rushing at least we knew they was a good team uh, when it came to running the ball, and we knew that all we had to do was just stop the run. So if we stop the run, you can't really do much. So They had that touchdown drive in the second quarter that put them ahead 10-7 primarily with the pass, and then from there on out uh, they didn't score. What did, what did the defense say? What did you guys say to each other after they scored that touchdown? Well, they scored. I kind of um, talked to Devin Watson. Told him to get his guys together, and he uh, stepped up, got his guys together, and they got the job done. And I talked to the front, and I said, as long as they uh, don't run the ball, they don't win the game. And we did what we had to do, and they didn't run the ball, so they didn't win the game. What have you heard about North Dakota State? Wofford went up there five years ago. Have the coaches told you much about the experience up there? Yeah, um, we see that they got a big front, but i um, not really worried. I feel like – we have the best front in the uh, nation, so I mean, I know if we show up and we play hard and then we do, we play our assignments, that take care of itself. Blake, a, a big win over Furman, obviously, to move to the quarterfinals, and and you had a, a huge play late in the first half, a touchdown catch to put the team ahead for good, as it turned out. Talk about that drive and then the catch itself, because Furman was ahead at the time. Uh, yeah, they definitely were ahead. Uh, when we came back out for that drive, we knew we had to make something happen, get down the field and score some type of way before the half was over and take momentum back. 
before we went back in. And then throughout the play, Coach Lane and Coach Brown came up with a great play call, and uh, we just executed it to the best of its ability, and it worked out for us. Wofford doesn't often have 45-second drives where you throw the ball almost every play. Is that kind of fun for you guys? Yeah, it's a little switch up. I know uh, we like that a little bit. I mean, we also like running the clock out too, and then on a long drive and scoring with the TD. But touchdowns are touchdowns. We'll take them any way we get them. The touchdown pass play to you, 33 yards. Talk us through that. You caught it about the 10, and then what? Uh, really, I don't know. I kind of stumbled a little bit, and then I knew I just had to try to get in. And then I was waiting for the call, and then once he said it was good, it just felt good. What did it mean to you guys to beat Furman two times? They're located right down the road. Yeah, that Furman's a great football team, and it's hard to beat any team twice in the same season. But uh, there's a lot of talk going on on social media and everything like that. So uh, they were talking a lot to us over that, and I think that motivated us even more. Uh, and that just helped us out in getting through everything. That's interesting. You know, it used to be guys would talk to each other. Teams would talk to each other through the paper. I guess now it's social media. Um, how close attention do you and your teammates pay attention to that stuff, or do you try to ignore it? Yeah, we try to ignore it and uh, do most of the talking on the field. But uh, when they tweeted out and did whatever they did, we all knew what it was, put in our group messages, and my, everyone was just ready to play from the start. All right, you go to North Dakota this week. Um, it's going to be very loud. I know South Carolina was loud, but I've been to both places. It's louder. What's it like, silent snap count, hand signals? What's it like to try to do all those things? Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, since we did at South Carolina, we'll have some experience with it already. And uh, It's just definitely a loud crowd in the Dome, but you know we're just going to work hard this week and prepare the same and then get the job done.